So, you do a video about proportions. Proportions of things and how to find the proportions of things. Some of it is, uh, there are certain systems definitely out there that you can look to. Uh, for example, the human body. There's a couple of different models for how to draw the human body. Um, so, almost all of them, it helps to start with marking some sort of straight line because, well, you need to find the build body. This is where the spine falls, uh, or otherwise a long line of, of how things line up. Doesn't have to be perfect, so I'm just tree hand using my finger to get on the edge of the paper to guide to create a, a key line. So, for example, you'll hear different things about head heights. Uh, if you look at anatomy text, so that's pretty accurate. Most skeletons are one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half heads tall, or skulls tall. Just to illustrate, you could stack that many on, and you have roughly the height. And the half is where the ankles roughly fall, just below or on across it, and the feet go below. So. That sort of model looks like this. The hips and the shoulders with the shoulders is about the same height, or sorry, same width as the rest of the body. It's a little higher up here, depending on how someone's built. Here's where the knee is. The bottom of the top of the where your eight pack is, your abdomen, your belly, chest's there. Torso is a little over two heads tall. Pelvis is about almost a head, a little bit of extra. The thigh from the top of the hip to the knee, roughly two heads. To from the knee, which falls just below to here, the better part of two heads. This is the shape of the rib cage. I'm doing this very fast and loose. The, sh the elbows line up with the round where the belly button would go, which is usually halfway from the groin to the sternum. Um, a little high there, so I'm right about there. Hands extended to mid thigh. If you want to figure out the angle of an arm, it's a neat little trick I picked up recently. You can often also just then you want to pose something. So you want your character looking at an apple that they're about to eat. You can hold it where you're <coughs> right where you want it to be, which is counterintuitive because you know a lot of people tell you you got to figure out work from the, the core, which is true. But here's a case where there's a little shortcut that works in your favor. So you draw a straight line from the socket of the shoulder to the hand. Go to the middle of that line. Go straight down at right angles like a T. Now the length of this will vary depending on the angle towards or away from the camera. But in this case, this part we know is going to this line, and this part, and that will give you the angle where the elbow will follow. This line, the elbow joint is going to fall on that line. So if 
for example, with a wider gesture. Let's say this is our hand. You're tipping your hat to somebody. So, straight line from socket of shoulder to the wrist. Find the middle of that line, draw out like a T, straight right angles, and then come up with an angle that looks right for how you want the figure to turn their arm towards the camera. or away from the camera, out, away from their body, more at a right angle. And the elbow joint's going to fall reliably. There. That actually saves an awful lot of fussing and time, I find. So, handy little hack. Okay. This is a form of constructive model. Again, it's this, this seven head tall version of the human body. And the ankles go at angles like that. You can think of the ankle joint as being this sort of shape. And the foot fits in it. All right, you can pivot along that angle. So they cantor out from the middle. They're higher on the inside and the outside lower. Okay, so seven heads works. You also see, let's do a little higher just to see, and I'm going to make the head a bit smaller. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight heads tall as a model sometimes. Uh, Loomis, for example, has some eight head tall constructive forms. Now, there's the midsection, which is basically the groin. The pelvis will sit on that, not be below it. Knees, bottom of feet this time, as opposed to falling below. Now, Eight heads tall, I think. I've seen it appear in a few different places. I'm putting a few things together myself. But I think it sort of goes back to uh, Greek uh, idealized human body forms, um, which are exaggerated. They're heroic. And it's about proportionate to a, a tall six-foot, lean, well-built person or even maybe not so well-built person, but a tall person, six foot, with not a, a especially large head, long-limbed. So it's definitely not everybody, but that can work. You notice how seven and a half heads and eight heads, neither of them look so wildly distorted from each other. Another model is one, two. Three, four, five, six. Just six heads tall. Now, even within these norms, six heads tall could be a teenager or a, a, a smaller woman. Uh, even a small guy, potentially. Um, same idea, so midsection. Here we're now more like the belt line. Let me just play this through to make sure. Yes, that fits with what I remember. There's the body. There's the pelvis. And 
anything actually to make it. Not quite six and a half, but six and plus. Put the feet again. Line up the bottom root cage. Hand's gonna be here. The mannequin first six and a half heads tall they all work what's the man to do well so what i've just shown you is there are different systems different ideas about what the ideal human model is but as a working artist what's handy to you is that there are actually a diverse variety of human bodies in the world and all of these models could work for them depending on the individual. Do they have a larger head or a smaller head proportionate to their overall body size? There are consistencies, though, you should have picked up on. I'm going to mark a few out in the center figure here. These proportionate regularities occur in all the models. The anchor points vary a little bit. But the torso to leg ratio, the length of arms to, uh, if you hold the arms out, the width is usually close to being equivalent to the height. Uh, you ever seen the Vitruvian man with his legs spread out and all that? That's kind of what he's displaying, that a circle and a square can fit the figure. Um, there are proportionate consistencies to the human figure. Those are the things that really kind of matter in terms of getting things to look plausible and make sense more than how many heads tall specifically. So on the list of things to think about, heads tall is more about, well, who's the character? Who am I drawing? Is it a uh, you know, Hollywood actor type or a shorter fella or sort of a mid-range mid average figure? Uh, do they have a large head for their body, a small head for their body? There is some variation on that. Um, all of these are a little bit variable. So if you just fall back on a system, you're going to end up with cookie cutter characters. That's just not that's not a way to work. A system helps you build a you know, build a foundation, but I think I've illustrated that there's got to be diversity in the foundations, different kinds. Uh, if you look at athletic sports bodies, for example, there's a great series of photographs of that that show just all the bodies lined up uh, of a bunch of uh, Olympic athletes uh, and are all standing in sort of uniform. Uh, underwear and the diversity of body types is is impressive and it's great reference for artists you should be looking at that so that's a constructive mannequin uh, and three models six point uh, four ish or three ish eight seven point five um there are people, you know, I've seen the Hulk drawn as a 10 head figure. Just get that mass. Um, you can exaggerate these pretty wildly. Uh, a lot of cartoon characters are basically one, two, three heads tall. All right? That's kind of normal the silly cartoon character. So their body and leg take up about as much room as their head does. Disney ducks are three heads tall. Crazed little seagull. Oh, maybe he's a duck. Maybe he's a duck, he thinks he's a seagull. That would be funny. Seagulls are bastards.
Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Forehead's tall. One, two, four. Let's give him a high waist. Short torso. Make that his pelvis. It's called distortion. Cartooning is all about the distortion and being uh, having fun playing with portions. Um, you're first trying it out and you're feeling. So, let's pay attention to what I'm doing for a second. Line up those knees, line up the ankles. If you're first trying it out, you're feeling anxious about it. Don't! I know, easier said than done. But really, it's it's not... Uh, when you're first figuring out how to play with cartooning... Oh, first of all, I, I recommend studying other artists and, and imitating their work a little bit. Actually, like do inf uh, studies, intentional copies. Uh, try to figure out why they're doing things and how they did things. Uh, read about them, their work. Learn about them. These days on the YouTube, there's... Tons that you can look at, get insights about how people think about how they work. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Four heads tall. See, like, you know, it depends on your goals. Uh, varying levels of realism, varying kinds of physiques. Um, it, it, it's not really uh, an either-or. It's a but-if-when, then this, or that, or whatever. Try things. See what works. You might discover something uh, brand new, which would be awesome. Tell us about it.